What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to solve optimization problems with constraints using Lagrange multipliers in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so this video today is going to be a little bit more mathematical than usual. We're going to learn how to use Lagrange multipliers in Python to solve optimization problems with constraints. And I want to show you what this means visually. I want to show you what it looks like so you get an intuition of what we're doing here. Let's say we have some function that we want to find a minimum or a maximum for. So let's say min, max, off. And we can do something very simple like x squared. In this case, we only have a minimum. Uh, as you can see here, a global minimum. We can do the same thing for something like 2 times x squared minus 2 times y squared, for example. I think this doesn't have a global optimum. Uh, but the goal is not to just find the optimum for a given function, we want to also have a constraint, we want to have a condition. For example, in this case, I could say something like I want to have the minimum and maximum of this function, given this condition given this constraint, that x to the power of two, plus uh, y to the power of two is equal to two, for example, this would now be a circle. And this basically means, um, that I'm looking for the minimum and maximum at these points here. So I'm looking at these, uh, at this specific line here, which is a circle, and I'm only interested in points that lie on this line. So don't confuse this to be the area, it's not the area, it's points on this line. So they have to be on here. And you can see that all the values that we find here are on the line. Uh, maybe to make this a little bit clearer, we can use something else. Let's go with something like x to the power of three, um, minus y or minus three y to the power of three. That should be a line, not a circle. Uh, actually, we need to say equals something equals five, for example. Um, and this will also give us a result. Uh, but you can see now that this is a line. So it's not the area we're looking for the lowest and highest point on this line. That's the basic idea here. So this is what we want to solve. And how you do that, I don't want to go too much into the mathematics here, because I'm not a mathematician, I'm a computer scientist, I do understand how it works to some degree, but I'm not here to explain to you the concept or the theory behind Lagrange multipliers. There are a lot of good videos on YouTube that you can watch for that I want to show you how to solve this in Python easily. So you basically solve this in Python the same way you solve it uh, by hand, but you do it in an automated way. So you don't have to to do all the calculations yourself, we're going to use a package called SymPy for this. So we're going to open up the terminal, and we're going to install the SymPy package. And um, this is basically a package that allows us to do symbolic mathematics in Python. So we're going to we're going to say import SymPy as sp. And then we're going to basically uh, state the function that we want to optimize, then a second function that is basically our um, our constraint, and then we're going to take the derivative of the combined function using a lambda, uh, which we're going to multiply with the um, with a constraint. And then we're going to solve the system of equations that comes from setting all the partial derivatives to zero. So we're going to start by saying we want to have the cert a couple of certain symbols, let's go with x, y and lambda, I'm going to just use an L here, x, y and lambda are going to be sp symbols. And we're going to pass your x, y and l. And now we can use them as variables in mathematics. So I can say that my function is, for example, uh, two times x squared, plus two times or actually minus two times y squared. And uh, this is basically the same thing we had in in Wolfram Alpha. So let's go back to our constraint x squared plus y squared equals two. Now the tricky thing here, it's actually not tricky. But the thing that you need to do here is, if you want to specify the constraint, you have to set it equal to zero. So you basically have to subtract by two in this case, so that the constraint is actually x squared plus y squared minus two equals zero because you need to multiply the expression. It's not an equation, it's actually a function, you need to multiply it with lambda. Um, so we're going to say g, our constraint is going to be uh, that x to the power of two plus y to the power of two minus two 
is equal to zero, but we're not going to specify is equal to zero. This is implicit here. Because now to get the final function that we're actually going to take the partial derivatives of uh, large f uppercase f, we're going to say f plus lambda times g. Um, this is basically how you do that with your uh, with the Lagrange multiplier. So we have basically our function. And then we want to multiply it, uh, or we want to add to it lambda multiplied with g, which is our uh, constraint. And now all we have to do is we have to compute fx, fy and f lambda. So the partial derivatives with respect to x, y and lambda, which we can do also with simpy by saying sp diff. So take the derivative of f with respect to x, and then just copy this to be the same for y and for lambda y and for lambda. There you go. And all we have to do now is we have to solve the system of equations because this basically now is going to be set to zero if we don't specify any additional thing. So we're going to basically have the derivative with respect to x, y and lambda set to zero. And then we just need to solve the system of equations to get the results for x, y and lambda and lambda is just basically a helper tool, we could say because the only thing we're interested in is actually x and y. So the value of lambda is important for the calculations for the solving of the system, but it's not really relevant to us. Uh, once we have the results. So we're going to say solutions is equal to sp solve. And we're going to pass here fx, fy, fl. And we're interested in x, y and l. There you go. And then we can print the solutions. So I can run this. And you can see that our solutions are the same that we get here from um, well, from alpha, we have all the minimums and all the maximums here in, uh, in the results. So we can also do the same thing with three variables. For example, we can also have something like x, y, z. And then we have, for example, the function x minus uh, y plus z squared. Now this is hard to visualize because now we have three input va uh, values. And then we have one output, which is four dimensional. So uh, we're not going to be able to easily visualize that. Uh, but we can go ahead now and say that we want to do something quite similar, we want to say, plus z to the power of two minus two, for example, this would now be a um, it would now be like like a ball, basically. And uh, but it would only be the the outside of it. So it would not be everything in this sphere, but it would be uh, what is it a certain not circumference the the surface of the sphere is uh, what we're looking at here in this four dimensional space. So we're going to do the same thing here. The only thing that we need to add is an fz. And we need to say derivative with respect to z, then we need to say f z. And we're also interested in z. And when I run this, we get a problem because we only have three symbols here. So let me define z as well. Run this again. And there you go. We now have all the optimums, all the extreme values for this particular optimization problem. Now we can also go ahead and add multiple conditions, we can go ahead and say, for example, uh, let's go with a different function that I have prepared here three times x minus y uh, minus three times z. Um, and now we have two conditions, the first one is going to be x plus y minus z is equal to zero. So just like that. And then the second one h is going to be equal to x squared plus two times z squared is equal to one. So minus one. And to now use both of these constraints, all we have to do is we have to define two lambda so we can say l1 l2, l1 l2. And then we just say uh, l1 times g plus l2 times h. And all we have to do then is we have to say we want to have f l1 f l2 l1 l2 f l1 f l2 l1 l2. There you go, run this and we get the results easily. So this is how you can do that easily in Python. Now to find out whether these are cell points or uh, maximums or minimums, you can always go with the Hessian and you can compute uh, uh, basically 
you, you can use the Hessian to to see if this is a minimum, maximum, or settle point, uh, or you can just plug in some values and and find out by by testing. But this is how you can easily use Lagrange multipliers to solve optimization problems with constraints in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.